This could be dangerous. Let's see if we can lock him up and fire and get out of here. Alright, we're gonna turn off. I'm gonna go ahead and chaff, just in case. We did not get a launch warning. Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. I'm back in DCS in the Su-25T, and today I want to go through some seed operations. We're going to do some practice for suppression of enemy air defenses, SEAD, seed, and we're going to be using some anti-radiation missiles to take out some radar-guided SAMs, and we're going to attempt to engage some infrared SAMs, uh, basically using some laser-guided weapons, and going to go through that process. I'm going to get some practice with these things, Hopefully teach you guys a little bit about how these things work. Just have some fun. Hopefully you don't get shot down at all, if not a lot. But air defense weapons are quite dangerous, especially especially when you're still learning like I am. And this uh, Su-25 is, I would say, definitely a capable aircraft, but not so capable that it makes taking out these kind of air defenses trivial. So I have to be careful, and we'll talk through that as we go. Um, but let's bring up our uh, weapons that we have equipped currently. So the first thing under our center fuselage pylon, we have the Phantasmagoria pod. And what this is, is the pod that is necessary for detecting radar emitting targets, meaning the radar based uh, SAMs, air defenses. Um, so we need that pod in order for our radar, our anti-radar missiles to work. Under pylons five and seven, uh, we have the big boys, these 640 kilogram KH-58U anti-radiation missiles so they are passive radar and that once they're locked on with a phantasmagoria pod they can guide themselves to the target uh, outside of that on pylons four and eight we have the kh25 mp 320 kilogram anti-radiation missiles uh, and then outside of that we have a pair of the upgraded version of that same missile the kh25 mpu and the reason i have each of those is because we're just going to practice with each of them and just see what what each of them is like um, outside on the outermost pylons, we have the MPS-410 pods, which are electronic warfare or electronic defense pods, ECM pods, um, electronic countermeasures, to help us hopefully interfere with the enemy radar and infrared and hopefully increase our survivability as we're trying to take out these targets. So we'll, uh, we've already got that loaded up, uh, so when I cancel that, that should be fine. We'll fire up the engines here, and while that's firing up we'll look at the map here so here to the north is the infrared targets that I've set up uh, which is a pair of M48 Chaparral uh, SAMs these are infrared SAMs and then one uh, SAM Avenger with Stinger so the Avenger is essentially a Humvee with eight infrared missiles on the back of it and then the Chaparrals are essentially kind of an armored vehicle with four infrared missiles. Um, again, I'm not sure if they carry ammo so they can reload, but um, that's what we're gonna be taking on. They have max ranges of about seven, eight, and eight and a half kilometers. So seven kilometers for that boy, eight and a half kilometers for these guys. But that's not what we're attacking first. First, we're doing the radiation-based ones. So we've got three uh, Roland uh, air defense systems, SAMs, out here and their radiation-based missiles. And they have a range of a max range of 6.3 kilometers. So um, our anti-radiation missiles have quite a bit more range than that. Um, big boys, the KH-58Us, have a range of 70 kilometers, and the KH-25s have a range of 25 kilometers. Um, but these radars, or these SAMs, since they're relatively short range, they are not going to be pinging us at that long so that we can engage them. So as you can see here, we've got these inner and outer rings um, for these SAMs. So there's their engagement ring, and then there's their uh, radar ring. They're probably not, they're not gonna be turning on their radars until we're basically in range, closer in range to where they're gonna engage us. So we can't stand off from 25 kilometers and fire at them. Otherwise, we'd literally probably be able to fire from right above the airport here. You get the idea there, so we're going to, engines are running, I'm going to close up the cockpit here, put my flaps down for takeoff, and we're going to taxi out onto the runway here, and go and engage them. I've got my waypoint set up so that waypoint one is in the area of those radar SAMs, and so that's where we're going to be headed first. 
and get her lined up. We'll go full power and we'll get heading over there and hopefully not get shot down. Yeah, these Sams are no joke, man. Sams are no joke. Phantasmagoria pod, so you can see we've got our little targeting box there that we'll use to basically, as our Phantasmagoria pod detects the radiation signals, this is how we'll select the target and then we'll uh, basically tell our missiles that's who we're engaging. I'm going to cycle here over to our KH-58s, our big boys first, and we'll go ahead and try and engage the first target with, with this big old boy. What we're going to do here is come in. Towards that, we're actually going to go ahead and hit E to turn on our electronic countermeasures. This is our anti-radiation measures, radar jamming uh, countermeasures, basically. So hopefully this will keep the uh, SAMs from locking us up as easily. I'm not an expert exactly on how these work. Hopefully it should make it easier. So as we head towards them, you can see right now, because that waypoint, they are basically about 20 kilometers ahead of us. They have not activated their radars yet. We have our uh, RWR, our radar warning receiver. Did we? here um, down here and so this will start to light up when they start tracking us and it will show us their direction and generally their range based on the signal strength as we're moving towards them here getting closer to 10 or 11 meters or 10 or 11 kilometers they should hopefully tick on well let's say hopefully they will start ticking on to try and engage us and hopefully that will give us the ability to target them and take them out so I'm expecting here shortly, because we're getting into engagement range, honestly, that I'm going to expect the radars to tick on and start trying to engage us here before long. So basically, I think, just to be try and be safe, when they start tracking us... When they turn on, there we go. So I, there's one off to my 10 o'clock there. Decently strong signal, so he's pretty close. I'm going to turn away from him now that he's turned on to start tracking us. Get some distance and then try and come back at him and target him rather than trying to turn in on him after we're already close and allowing him to engage and fire missile at us. So. so there he is, still tracking us, even as we're moving away. Now you can see the arrow is basically pointing to our left aft, our port aft, um, telling us the direction it's coming from. That red light at the bottom indicates the threat type. And we're actually seeing with that green dot that we also have a secondary threat potentially, so it may be two of our three targets have turned on to start tracking us, but we're going to turn towards them. Again, so here they're coming across. Their radars are active, so the Phantasmagoria pod should see them. There you go, right there. So we're going to, like the targeting, we're going to move this over there. Hit enter to lock it on. We've got launch authority. Hold the fire. Missile away. And again, this one's going to track the radar, so we'll go ahead and turn away. Before this guy actually engages us. We're going to put him on our beam so that we're flying perpendicular to him, which would make it, should make it harder for him to track us. Oh, there's a lock. That solid tone was a lock, but they hadn't fired yet. We want to be careful there, because if there's a beep, then that means that they're actually firing at us. Did not get did not get a notification that they got destroyed, so I'm wondering if they shot down our missile. I think that's a thing they can do. So we'll put some more speed on, come around, fire another one. Alright, radar warning here still has a little after one o'clock. There we go. So let's 
get him on target. All right, got him locked up. Oh, lost the lock. Did he turn off his radar? Since we're further out. Doesn't want us firing another missile at him. All right, there we go. It's a little tricky not having this on my HOTAS, so. Got launch authority. Firing, missile away. We're gonna go ahead and turn away and defend. He's got lock on us, so we're gonna drop some altitude. Missile is tracking to the target. Is that a trail from him or from me? Well, I'm a little disconcerted. It seems that neither of those hit. Now we have our start with our older model anti radiation missiles. We're a bit outside of range for this bad boy. Got a primary, and also listen to secondary threat basically straight ahead, so I don't know if that's both of them, but... We're gonna come in, fire again here. Oh, we went cold. Although we still have one at one o'clock, so maybe that one's a further target. We're getting locked up. Oh, for this guy that's close. This could be dangerous. Let's see if we can lock him up and fire and get out of here. Alright, we're gonna turn off. I'm gonna go ahead and chaff, just in case. We did not get a launch warning. destroyed there. My, <laughs> I'm ready to get my head tracker so I don't have to use my... A, so I don't have to use my hat switch to try and turn my head, and B, so I can use my hat switch to actually move the targeting uh, box instead of having to reach over like a throttle and reach over my keyboard. The whole idea of a HOTAS, right, H-O-T-A-S, hands-on throttle and stick, is that you can perform all the critical functions of your aircraft without taking your hands off the controls. Currently not getting any radar hits. Alright, got it off our 11. So we'll keep coming around. There we go. Primary and secondary threats. I don't know if there's a guy closer. It appears that there might be a guy up closer. We're going to turn a little bit more here and see if there is a guy closer off our... Yep. Oh, I don't know if he's closer. But he's there. Alright, so let's turn back in on this first guy. Unless he turned his radar off here entirely. I think this is generally where he was. They might be trying to hide so they don't take another missile like their buddy did. They'll be getting greedy here before long. Come on. Alright, got one off our 11 o'clock. Missile away. Go ahead and turn away. Critical damage. All right, so that guy's not completely destroyed yet, but good enough. So we'll try and switch in and engage the last dude here. Now we're to our upgraded KH-25s, uh, whatever MPUs, I think. All right, what do we got? There we go. Right off the nose. So we should hopefully be out of his launch range still, and well inside of ours. Launch authorization. Hold the fire. Missile away. Go ahead and start to beam him a little bit here.
think, based on the fact that all of the radar signals have dropped, we've eliminated all three of them, those bad boys. That other ADS that was critically damaged is now destroyed. So we should be all clear there. Let's go ahead and throw the autopilot on for a second while we check the map. Yep, we have cleared out those threats. Look at us being effective. I managed not to get shot down, which is impressive, especially for me. These guys are uh, quite a big threat. Now, that said, the infrared guys are even more dangerous. So what we're gonna do now, I've switched us into RGB mode. So we're gonna head back to base, land, and switch our loadout because we can't use anti-radiation missiles, anti-radar missiles against infrared SAMs because they don't emit radar signals. They use our infrared signature to track us, which means that we won't get notification if they fire. So the way that we hunt the infrared SAMs is gonna be quite different. Let's look at our rearming here. So while those are spinning down, we'll go ahead and top our fuel back up to a nice amount of fuel. What we are going to do for this, for our infrared uh, weapons, we don't need the Phantasmagoria pod because, again, it's not anti-radiation, but we are going to put on this LLTV pod, which is uh, a night vision uh, infrared pod, basically. Our uh, laser missiles, we're not going to take um, anything chunky down here so we're actually going to remove weapons from these pylons what we're going to take is a set of four karens you remember from our last video how much i love firing off karens so these are laser guided missiles uh, instead of radiation missiles and they're not tv missiles either they're uh, laser guided laser guided missiles going to keep our electronic uh, interference pods there to hopefully do our anti-ir um, and so the plan here is with these um, oh, I guess I can't do that while this is up. I gotta make sure those engines are spooled down here real quick. Let's see. Request refuel. Request rearm. Alright. So for these infrared targets, basically what's gonna happen here is these guys aren't gonna give us a radar warning when they start tracking us, when they lock on, and when they fire. All right, so unless we're actually looking at them and see a missile in the air, we're not going to know we've been shot at, which makes them very dangerous, um, especially when you don't have a head tracker and you can't just easily glance over to look and see if you've been shot at. Um, so what we're going to do is going to basically consider this like it would be someone on the ground or someone in, in reconnaissance giving us intel and telling us the location of where these things are because they've already been identified, they've already been located, and we're going in to destroy them after they've been uh, located and identified as opposed to us trying to seek them out organically and figure out that they're there. So I know there's three uh, anti-airs, in, infrared anti-air targets in this area, uh, so we're going to just go and take them in. So basically what we're going to do is look for landmarks from the air to try and identify where we expect to find these things, use our infrared targeting pod to lock on our missiles to them, our laser, and activate our laser for our laser guided missiles, and try to engage them and destroy them from outside of the range from which they can engage us. Because again, for the refueling's complete. For these two guys, for the Chaparals, Chaparals, whatever, <laughs> they have a maximum engagement distance of 8.5 kilometers. And this guy, the Sam Avenger, has a maximum range of 7 kilometers. And our Karens, I believe, have a maximum range of about 15 kilometers. Is that what I said? Yeah, our 15 kilometers. So we should be able to, if we can identify them and locate them early enough, we should be able to engage them from a position of safety um, before they are capable of engaging us. So that's the plan. Let's give it a try. We're rearmed. Engines back on. Go ahead and switch back to navigation mode and we'll throw that to waypoint two since that's where I created our route to, to point out where those guys are. Switch to air to ground mode. 
targets are going to be off here to our left, so as we're continuing to climb, we'll turn towards that. I'm going to hit Control O to bring up my night vision Schwal sensor. If I hit O, you'll see that we'll just have. Um, I hit P. Oh god, what is. I don't know what P does. Hold on. Dragging. Sh oh shit. Did I hit. Did I hit the parachute? I, uh, I, I accidentally hit P instead of O, and so <laughs> I pulled out our landing parachute, and it tore right off the back of the aircraft. Well, we're going to be landing the second time without our parachute as well. <laughs> Whoopsie. All right, so as I was saying, if I just hit O, you'll see we have our normal Schwal targeting pod, um, whereas if I hit Control O, it'll turn on our thermal targeting pod. So we're going to be using, I'm going to hit shift E to turn on infrared jamming, our infrared countermeasures, to hopefully make it harder for these things to engage us. And we're going to turn towards them and s see if we can locate them with our Karens. Alright, so where are we? So from here, I think this little town out here. So I think what we're looking at is somewhere over in this area. It's where this guy's gonna be, if I remember correctly. Let's see if we'll throw on autopilot real quick and see if we can locate this guy on our sensor. What do we got here? A radar tower. Let's take back over here real quick. Because we're going to get danger close relatively quickly. We're actually at about 9 kilometers now, which is dangerous. So we're going to turn. So we don't get... Again, we're not going to get a warning when these guys start engaging us. So we're going to turn towards the water and re-engage and try to locate them. So we've got to figure out where they are. I think they're over here. Or is that the small town? Is that right there, the town we're looking for? In which case, they'd be right there, kind of just past those trees. In which case, we're actually quite close. Which makes me a little bit nervous. I don't see a missile being fired at us. So it might actually be kind of like right there, basically right above where the wingtip is now. Is probably maybe where we're looking? Probably maybe? Yeah, as we're out here, this guy is... So I'm kind of basically... My landmark I'm looking for is this little town here. I think that's the other town we were looking at. So he's going to be kind of out in this field near those trees. Uh, for that guy, so... Okay, so there, right off the nose, is basically that town. So what the aircraft that... Or the target we're looking for is probably going to be right over here somewhere. Oh, I think that might be him. Let's look at here. Uh, yeah, I think that's him right there. So we don't have a lock yet. We got KC on the monitor there, so we don't have a lock. We're almost in range based on the bars there, so once he gets locked and we get close to range, there we go, AC is locked. We're almost within range of our missile. So right before we get into range, we're gonna hit Control O and turn on our laser. That now. Oh God, no, it's Shift O. Damn it, I did that last time too. All right, let's get him back on target quickly and see if we can make this work before we get shot down. Shift O. Launch Thor Z. Fire. Now we have to keep this thing locked on all the way to target since it's laser guided. So we're going to track that in. I'm going to start flaring because I'm not sure the front. Alright, so he hit. We're going to turn away. Shift O, turn off my laser. 
gonna keep flaring in case any of those other guys started locking onto me. All right, so while we're creating some more distance here, throw on autopilot. All right, so for the next guy, if we come out over the water here, if we look at these kind of towns basically coming from the city on the water, along the line here from where these towns are, he's gonna be right up against the tree line past these towns, so. Hopefully that'll be how we can identify that guy. Cities, towns going back. So basically, I think we're looking at this hill up here. It's probably where we're looking. Zoom in. Oh, I think we might see him. I think that's our guy right there. Got to get a little bit closer to confirm but I'm pretty certain that's the guy we're looking for. So as we're approaching range, we'll wait for that to get a lock. Since it's a vehicle, we've got our targeting reticle set to about 10 meters, which is about the size it's, that we want for it to be able to target the right size to target. All right, less than 10 kilometers here. So we're starting to get close to where I'm starting to get nervous. And I definitely want this lock. There we go, AC, that's lock. We're gonna make sure we hit shift O instead of control O this time to turn our laser on. Shift O, laser's on. Almost into range. NP, launch authority. Hold fire. We're going to slow down here a little bit. And we're going to start flaring. times just to be safe. Shift O. Turn our laser off so it doesn't overheat. All right, so while that's coasting off that way. So this guy again, we've got sort of in a line from where that guy was past these trees. We have a couple of towns and he's nestled kind of in this area here. We might have to get some altitude to get a good view on that but should hopefully be able to identify that location without too much trouble. Let's see. So basically with these guys here, I'm guessing he's actually going to be right about here. Oh, wait, was I like right? Oh, okay. I think this is him right there. I'm having a lot of good luck targeting these guys. Actually, since we still have a little bit of distance, I'm gonna switch over to the Cheval real quick just to kind of show you the difference in what we would see. So actually it's not too bad here. There you can see it's just not quite as much contrast. So this is still that guy, but the infrared view kind of gives you more contrast. All right, we're locked on there, almost in range. To throw a Karen at him, we're gonna ask for the manager. Shift O, laser on. Launch authorization, firing. I don't know the term for air-to-ground missile. It's not a rocket, so I don't believe it's a rifle. It could be a rifle because it's air-to-ground. Avenger. Turn that laser off. And we did a, re a really effective job of clearing out missiles. I didn't even get shot down. I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> that guy is smoked. All right, well, we've cleared out six air defenses. I'm excited. Uh, we're going to RTB and land. I'm, I'm, you can tell I'm a little stunned. I'm just like, great success. All right. Uh, I'm still carting one more missile. For simulation's sake, I would hold on to this missile, just because it's gonna be quite expensive. 
Um, but for the purposes of the fact that I don't necessarily want to land with an unbalanced load and because I don't really care, uh, we're going to go ahead and left control W here to jettison our weapon. Oh, maybe it was working its way out from the inner pylons for that, so, okay. RTB mode? Yeah, and we're, I forgot, gotta remember. I don't have my parachute, because I was an idiot. <laughs> so we're gonna have to make sure that we come in soft and slow enough that we don't need that parachute, because I ain't got one. <laughs> Get a good flare before we come in. Kind of, kind of stalled her in, actually. <laughs> that was a, a stall warning before we touched, so we slowed down a lot coming in. I could have come down on my gear too hard uh, if I had stalled earlier than that. So that was a little dangerous. Come pull up here. Pull up to the spot. <coughs> oh dear. Alright. We're pretty good here, so we'll shut down the engines. Shut down those electronics. Take a look at our girl. Yeah, we didn't pop the wheel. We're all right. She's in great shape. Except for that uh, parachute. <laughs> all right, minions. We're going to leave it there with, once again, quite good, great success. Taking out some SAM sites. This is the last kind of like core weapon system. Kind of our last core weapon, weapon system that we needed to work on f before I go into more missions. So expect my next Su-25 videos to be me trying to use this thing in some combat missions. So that should be quite a bit more spicy. Um, these targets would have actually shot at us if I got too close, but I managed to actually do a really good job of engaging them uh, from outside of their range. And uh, yeah, it was a good time. So if you guys wanna see another DCS video for me before those come out, go check out my last video where we were doing guided missiles. If you want a little bit about that, you, you saw a little bit of that with those Karens this time. But if you want more in-depth detail about that, check out that other video or any of my other DCS videos or any other video on my channel. I got all kinds of stuff. I got Call of Duty. I got Battlefield. I got uh, Paw Patrol. Yeah, didn't know that, did you? <laughs> go check that stuff out, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.